Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel for a relaxing painting demonstration of this new fantasy intuitive piece. Working on a 16 by 20 um, primed canvas, I pre-painted it grey. I've got a number 30 filbert, Mars black, some titanium white. With a little bit of water in my brush, I'm going to take black and white and make a darker shade of grey. I'm going to add a little bit of this charcoal colour that I made um, in the centre of the canvas, just brushing back and forth kind of just blocking in some areas that I know I need to have some shadow to build up my highlights for my mountains and my water. I'm going to clean my brush off, pick up some white, and just start adding a few little swirls towards the top of the canvas for my clouds. I'm going to exaggerate the clouds and make them extra swirly and really let go with this piece and have fun playing up on swirls, shadows, highlights, and anything that pops into my mind during um, mid-painting. I love these intuitive pieces where I have nothing planned out and I just go with my heart and trust my brush and the canvas. I'm adding more black, straight black on either side of the mountains to really start bringing in that depth and create a nice contrast. From then I'll pick up titanium white and add a little bit of that on the other side of the mountains for my light. This way we've got some nice light and dark shadows highlights going on to really start bringing this painting to life. This is a, a fun base to go by and build up a landscape from. And I'm going to add a few more little mountains uh, next to those just so that we've got a whole mountain range back there. Blend it out the bottom to soften them and make them a little bit blurry at the base, keeping them nice and crisp looking at the top. I'm going to come in either side, add some land, just some tight little ripples with my black, and add a few little trees at the base. Um, I'm going to add my um, branches on my trees with a filbert brush. Before I do that, I'm going to come in with a small round brush, add some more thick, heavy bodied white paint for all the snow peaks on my mountains to really make them pop out. I mentioned this a lot during my um, regular tutorials when it's a full length and I'm showing you guys walking you through step by step that it's very important to not have every single thing in your painting full focus you want especially with a landscape you want to have a few areas or one that is in full focus and then make everything else blurry that's going to make your paintings really stand out and extra special and I'm going to just exaggerate some scoops and loops down here in the valley of the mountains I'm going to take a dry mop brush and I'm going to make some gray again, dark gray base, and I'll start building up some little bushes and foliage on either side. I just love uh, the velvety look that a grayscale painting can have. It's really fun to start out a painting this way, then come in and glaze in with some color afterwards. I'm going to just start creating a circular shape um, and frame in those mountains and the water. I'm going to make that seem and feel like a window or a portal into that world. I'm going to frame it in with some foliage along either side, just using some mop brushes, black and white, little taps here and there. And then I'm going to come down here and bring in some uh, hanging, cascading little flowers. Um, they remind me of the mimosa flowers uh, that we have in bloom down by our beach here. The mimosa flowers are bright yellow. These are just white in, in this painting for now until we add a little bit of color to them later on, which you'll see later in this video. I'm going to start to push a tap with the bottom of my brush for just a little indication of some little petals and individual flowers on those. And then I'm going to take a mini filbert brush and just start tapping in pulling in a line for the trees that I want to stand out or I want to stand out so I've got just a few trees there and then I'll just tap some branches a little smaller on the top for the branches so less pressure and then pushing a little bit harder to make them a little fuller towards the base. I'm going to come in and add a cozy little cabin now. I'm going to make the roof dark and slant out and then I'm going to add my windows with some white. I'll add a little um, railing and some stairs, a little chimney on the top. I always think it's so inviting to add a little cabin here and there within your 
uh, landscapes, especially fantasy ones, all those things that speak to me and draw me into a scene um, are little cabins like this, a stairway, uh, waterfalls, lamp posts. So I really like to include all those things when I'm painting intuitively. Um, even though I'm not uh, really thinking about what I want to paint, they always seem to just make an appearance and come out on the canvas. It's kind of interesting when you've been painting for so long, um, you kind of just don't even have to think about what you're painting anymore, your body and mind and and just kind of knows what it wants to paint and um, takes on a life of its own. If you guys have any comments on your painting journey, what you like to paint, anything you want to add, uh, leave it in the comments below. Uh, every morning I have my cup of coffee, in the afternoon I have my tea, and I sit down and enjoy reading all your comments and your questions. So feel free to leave anything below. I'm going to add a little dock here with um, my black and white. A little flat brush is the easiest to use, but you can use whatever brush you feel comfortable with. So black first, then white for the highlights. I'll add a little reflection, shadow in the water. I'm gonna also add a little boat, a little rowboat. Uh, wouldn't be complete without a little boat by the dock. And then I'll add a little um, highlight with my white inside, a few little lines for the seats, and a little oar. So I'm gonna take my little round brush now and just come in with the finer little highlights and details, just little scoops and lines, nothing, it seems really detailed, but when you break it down, all I'm adding are little dots and dabs and lines, and you guys can all follow along and paint this. I welcome you to paint all these pieces with me. They're very therapeutic and fun to paint. I'm gonna add a little bit of smoke coming out of the chimney, a little tight wiggle at the base of the chimney, and then make it larger and blend out and fade out after. Then I thought it would be fun to use one of my toothbrushes that I like to um, use for creating stars and snow um, and just magic and make things look a little bit extra magical in my painting. So I added some water, some white, sprayed, and then I had one kind of wonky looking <laughs> gloopy globby chunk of white and I decided to make that into a dragonfly without even thinking of it. Or thinking about it I just before I knew it had a little dragonfly take shape here so I thought that was kind of special let me know if um, this painting speaks to you if there's anything in here that um, has significance to you I always wonder why these little things come to mind and end up on the canvas without me planning them out and I think maybe they're for somebody like you out there and maybe it means something to you but I hope you guys are enjoying all of these and that I'm sharing these uh, personal intuitive paintings with you. I feel like life is too short and we need to share things that mean a lot to us and that bring us joy and just help to spread that around. So feel free to spread um, your art around, share this video with others so that everybody can just be a little bit happier. And I really truly believe that art makes us happy. It's brought me so much joy over the years and healing. I'm adding a few more little flower petals and little uh, flower buds here with my round brush just straight white and then I'm going to start adding a little bit of waterfalls here and there uh, a few stairs a few steps so it feels like we're really getting invited into this scene here and heading towards that cozy looking cottage so just a few lines first with black leaving some spaces making them wider as they get down towards the bottom of the canvas I'll add some white to bring some light to the tops of each of the steps. And then after I finish these stairs, I'll leave them for a little bit. I'll come back and add maybe one or two more highlights afterwards. But right now I wanna concentrate on adding a big, big old looking tree here and have some branches coming out for those um, cascading flowers at the top. I thought this would be kind of another nice addition to this painting bringing in a little bit more of this foreground and framing in the that scene in the background. So with my round brush, flat brush, or a filbert brush, I tend to kind of go back and forth to many different brushes during these intuitive um, painting sessions. I'm just gonna pull up and curve over with a big tree on either side and add some branches. Then I've got another mop brush. Again, it's dry, paint only, a little bit of paint, and a gentle tap here and there to make some 
little bushes and foliage really pop out and kind of just grow in and around uh, the trees. I want to line either side of the little stairs, that stairway up there with those um, little bushes as well. Make everything kind of inviting and cozy looking. Then I'm gonna add some branches to the top of this tree. I wanna add some highlights to them after as well. So I'll be using some bright white for that. And just a little tap partially on the black branches that are there already. Um, be mindful when you're adding your highlights to not over highlight. You don't want to cover up all your dark areas, otherwise you won't have any highlights. So you need highlights for shadows and you need shadows for highlights. They both need each other. You can't have one without the other. So I'm just pulling in some more branches, just twisting, rolling and wiggling my brush around with a little bit of black, a little bit of water, and I'm using my small round brush. Uh, I might come in with a liner brush as well. Most of the time I do use a liner brush for my um, really small, fine, detailed branches. It's just a lot easier to get the width that I want with a liner brush. I decided to come in here and just quickly add a little lamp post. I thought that would be really cute right by the stairs and just make it kind of look like it's crooked and like an old a tree branch or something so not as straight and kind of ornate as I normally paint my um, lamp post it's a little bit unusual this time and then I'm going to come in and add some flowers just little blobby circles with a dark center finally coming in with a fan brush water and white you want to make sure that your fan brush splits apart and goes off into little sections so it kind of I describe it as making it look like it's a rake once it looks like a rake, you can then create these beautiful, graceful streaks in, in loops in the trees and for like um, drapey kind of um, vines and moss. And you can also make beautiful waterfalls when the fan brush splits apart like that. I've completely dried off the painting. It's time to come in and add a little bit of magic with light pastel colors. So I'm only using a little bit of water in my brush with turquoise, light blue violet, neon yellow, any cool yellow will work. You don't have to have neon. If you're curious about the paints I'm using, um, all of my neon paints are Holbein and all of the other paints that I use are Liquitex, Liquitex Basics. Those are my favorite brands. There are many great paint brands out there. I encourage you guys to try all of them and see what works best for you. Um, the prices vary and just use whatever you can where you at where you're at in your painting journey right now so I've also got some neon red some neon rose I'm mixing a few of these colors together right here I've got turquoise aqua green with my blue with a clean brush I'm then going to take a little bit of red so I'm only using a tiny bit of paint I took a little bit of white with that to make a light soft paint color and I'm really just grazing over parts of the painting. When I layer some of them over one another and add all these colors, it is gonna give this an iridescent look to it, but I wanted it to stay looking kind of old fashioned at the same time as a black and white. I didn't wanna to add too, too much saturation and sometimes less is more. And in this case, it really works well in this painting to add just a hint of colors and these beautiful pastel colors over this black and white. I'd love to know what you guys think. Be sure to leave comments below. Um, I haven't come up with a title for this painting yet, depending on when you're watching this. This is May of 2023. If you have any ideas or anything that comes to mind, please leave it down below for me to read. And I may choose yours um, to name this painting. That would be great if you guys, you guys usually help me out a lot when I'm asking for painting titles um, online. So I thought I would ask here. I don't know if I've ever asked here before for your uh, help in um, titling something, but go ahead and leave um, your suggestions below. I'm going to finish this painting off with a little bit more color here and there. And I want to thank you guys so, so much for watching, for all of your support, sending love, creativity, and healing out to all of you. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye!